And I get a, a very often this question, and I'm quite intrigued by it, uh, about those beings that seem to show up within your work. Who are they? How long have you been there? Well, um, let's talk about uh, how we could actually see them first, and then I'll talk about them. Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the type of person that ever looks for them. I'm not the type of person that uh, uh, spends a lot of time trying to connect with beings. But think about this. Uh, we, we, the brain could only see equal to how it's wired. If, the brain, if there's no circuitry for patterns in the brain, then you don't see reality, right? It's called pattern recognition. So then how do we begin to see things that exist but we don't have the circuitry to perceive, right? In other words, we don't see things how they are. We see things how we are. Mm -hmm. So you spend the majority of your life narrowing your focus on everything material in this three-dimensional reality. You see objects, you see things, you see people, you see bodies, you see places, and our senses plug us into the three-dimensional reality. So everything that's known to us is wired in our thinking neocortex. So what we're seeing, and it's happened to me so many times, let's say you have a profound mystical experience. There's four states of consciousness. There's wakefulness, there's sleep, there's dreaming, and then there's a the transcendental moment. Now that transcendental moment is something that we have been working to induce. In fact, we now know we can induce it. We've measured it. We know the pineal gland and certain areas of the brain become active, that the limbic brain all of a sudden moves into high, high frequencies. And a person has a full-on sensory experience without their senses. In other words, whatever is going on between their ears is more real than every, anything they've ever experienced before. So if your senses are heightened, you know, right now, if everything you were seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, uh, if your senses were heightened, your awareness of everything around you would be heightened as well. Well, awareness is consciousness, and you can't have consciousness without energy. So in a sense, then, if a person has a transcendental experience mm -hmm. and they start interacting with beings that are not physical, if they have that really profound experience, that experience is going to be logged in their brain because experience enriches their brain, yes? Mm -hmm. The end product of an experience is an emotion, but you wouldn't feel fear from these beings. You would feel a kind of a love or a grace or a presence or an acceptance. And so then you wouldn't be intimidated or afraid of them. You wouldn't throw them into the box of some dogma or superstition. It's a profound moment where you're feeling such profound and intense love that you're leaning in and paying attention to the pictures in your mind. And in a sense, the stronger the emotion you feel from that inner event, the amount of gratitude or love or joy that you feel, the more you pay attention to the pictures in your mind. Now you're branding and embossing new circuitry in the brain. Now what's the significance of that? Well, when you come back to your senses, to Lilu, now you can perceive a broader spectrum of reality mm -hmm. because you're going to begin to see things that have always existed, but you didn't have the circuitry to perceive them. Mm -hmm. So then as we activate the pineal gland, it acts like a radio receiver, and those tiny little crystals, as we talked about in our last interview, begin to shimmer. And if, a, and if a student or a, uh, a person can begin to tune into energy and frequency to know how to suppress the mechanism of the neocortex, mm -hmm. the, the memory bank of the known self, to slow their brain waves down into theta and in that state where the body's asleep and the mind is awake and you can tune into frequencies and activate that system, that, that little pineal gland is going to hook into a frequency that's carrying information and it's known as a transducer which means it's like a radio antenna or a TV antenna, it's gonna translate mm -hmm. that frequency into profound imagery. That imagery then is not gonna be anything that's known to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be something that's outside the scale of known. So when a person comes back to their senses, they're gonna perceive a broader spectrum of reality. So I guess about five or six years ago, mm -hmm. uh, I started sensing f these presences in the room during our week-long events. It started at the week-long events? Uh, well, it started at the five-day, I'm sorry, the five-day, four-and-a-half-day uh, workshops. I started, s out of the corner of my eyes, started perceiving certain things, primarily when we were doing the pineal gland meditations. At other meditations as well, but uh, there was an energy in the room that I noticed, and they're very noble, and they're very interested in what we're doing. Observing? 
many, many times in the beginning they observe. They, they are along the walls and they're, they're not uh, small. <laughs> they're very, very tall. Uh, How tall? Oh, um, most of them probably uh, three meters, maybe more tall. I mean, they're, they're beautiful and big. And they have this grace about them and this presence. And they're very interested. They observe. And when I started seeing them and, and perceiving them, I never really asked who they were. I never, I just observed. And I, and for me, uh, when we do the pineal gland meditations, I'm up at 3 in the morning or 2.30 in the morning, and we're going, and everybody's sitting up and laying down. And I'm, I'm awake the entire time, and I'm working with the audience. And I start doing the meditations with my eyes closed while I'm doing it. And a lot of times I open my eyes, and I'm in theta. I'm the, the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open, and in a sense, I'm dreaming with my eyes open, and all of a sudden, I start perceiving things. Well, when that started happening, um, people started reporting things back to me, and sometimes it was kind of cool because we started getting stories of two different people in a room of a thousand people saying, I saw this incredible thing, and the other person saw the exact same thing. And I saw something very similar. I never said it. But all of a sudden, you're starting to get a collective noticing something happening. Well, I was, I was getting ready for the day at one of our events. And as I was waking up and moving around and I was between worlds, they started talking to me. And they said to me, we can only lower our frequency to a certain point. We can't lower our frequency anymore, energy anymore, because we would change our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And we love ourselves too much mm -hmm. to do that. But if you can raise the frequency of the audience mm -hmm. to a higher frequency, we'll meet mm -hmm. in that place where that energy intersects. And so there's an invitation or a door mm -hmm. for them to move through or to exist as. And um, do you think they've been supporting your work? Uh, yeah, I don't know if they directly support my work, but I'll tell you that maybe the better word to use is they approve mm. uh, of it. And and um, uh, there would be like an older sister, an older brother that mm. totally loves you and sees that you're really making an effort. You're making great strides, and and they're just a little bit higher on the spiral, you know, uh, in consciousness. And so now. Um, Fast forward to a few years later, uh, I don't want to jinx this, you know, it's kind of funny because I don't really talk about it that much, but... But it's great that you're opening up to this and that we can, because... Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, because... It's very interesting. Because I'm more interested in making a new normal, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and I would be a doubter if I didn't have those experiences, but now what's happening is, is that, and this happens kind of wild and inconsistent, and, and maybe we'll play a couple testimonials of people who have been healed by them. And they are sometimes very aggressive. I mean, very aggressive. Though uh, In one story, a woman had a severe problem with her hip and her knee. And while she was in the middle of a healing, this being grabbed her leg and shook it really hard, really hard, and kept shaking it, shaking it, shaking it, until it released. And she was yelling, in her mind, hey, do you know that hurts? And just kept working it until finally it just it, it broke loose. And so I don't know how that happens, but the important point is mm -hmm. that it is so real to the person, and that person's leg is up in the air, by the way, while this is going on. Whether it's real or not, mm -hmm. if it's the person experiencing it in a lucid state, that it m seems so real then it is real. <laughs> and the person has a dramatic, dramatic change in their health. So um, just because uh, we can't see something with our eyes doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know, that, that, that in fact, this is happening more and more in our work. And what's happening, which is really cool, is that, and we've measured the energy in the room, as you know, so many times in our advanced events, 